Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Megan Good. Welcome what back. Up? Good morning. Good morning. I love that hat. The G is for God. Yeah. God thank is you, dope. Thank you. That's hard. Thank you. You know what? She's spreading some good vibes already because you just gave Envy a compliment as well, which is amazing. I've I just told Envy I like his hoodie. I, he got Mike, a young Mike Tyson holding cash on it. That's dope. You never know what Charlemagne had to ask him. Is he flirting with me? That's right. definitely had to ask <laughs> him. Megan okay, Good spreading the positive vibes. <laughs> just shut up and let Megan promote her movie please all right <laughs> the intruder <laughs> yeah let's talk about it you and i seen it oh you saw it we saw yeah, it they okay. said it's the screener we only had 24 hours to watch it so we had to hurry up and in between the show um watch it because michael Ealy was up here yeah right. yeah yeah. i saw that mm -hmm. yeah what'd you guys think uh listen i really liked it i enjoyed it we both <laughs> were in here watching it and i was like okay let's get michael Ealy out of here so we can finish watching the movie the okay, washington, okay. washington post kind of ished on it a little bit but i didn't i i liked the movie so yeah. I was trying to think, that, do I like corny movies or was the movie good and the Washington Post was hating? Uh, I thought it was a good movie. I think the Washington Post was hating. Like, the good thing is, like, I've seen it now in Atlanta. I've seen it in St. Louis. I've seen it in Chicago. And I saw it here last night. And when mm -hmm. you see it with a crowd, it's like the energy is crazy because it's like a 90s throwback movie. Like, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. meant to be interactive. It's meant for you to be like, girl, don't do that. Girl, watch out, you know? And it has that energy. So it's fun to see everybody like really re react that way. So it's probably nice. a white critic from the Washington Post who <laughs> doesn't, you know, they don't interact with the screen the way we do, right. so they didn't right. get the full feel of it exactly. probably. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Are you really yeah. like that in real, in real life? Like, that nice? Because you were so nice in that movie, I'm like, come on, Megan! I feel no. like... I was that nice. Like, at 22, yeah. I could definitely like see who Annie is. At 30, I'm like, no, nah, man. Naive or nice? Um, nice. Like okay. I could see certain stuff, and I'd be like, "Oh man, that's that's messed up." But I'd be like, "Well, you know, that person's been through something, and they probably have damage." Da, 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 da. At thirty, I'm like, "Nah, they still did it though." Mm -hmm. so. I feel you though, because I was watching it, and I was like, "No," because I felt like his character was being a little harsh. And then I was yeah. looking at you, and I was like, "She's right. He lost his wife. Like yeah. he's sad. He's attached to the house. Nah, B, so you're empathetic <laughs> toward him, and but he was very flirtatious." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Towards you. Yeah. And she, the thing is, the thing about the character was like, Dion was like, Annie doesn't see what anybody else sees. Mm -hmm. She only gets one side of Charlie. Mm -hmm. So when he's having all these different personalities that he's, you know, having with Scott, she doesn't see any of that. Right. So she's like, why are you pressing so hard? Like, you know, she feels bad for the dude. Have you ever previously had somebody that was like stalkerish that you started to date a little bit and then you were like, they're a little bit crazy? <laughs> yes, I have. Besides Charlotte. Wow, Mike. making good at stalkers. <laughs> now, how do you handle that, though? Because sometimes you're a little, like, it's hard to just come right out and be like, look, dude, just leave me alone. Yeah, you know, the thing is, is that people are really crazy. And sometimes when you come right out and say, leave me alone, you have a bigger problem on your hands. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I feel like you have to use wisdom and you just finesse the situation and don't make them feel played because you don't know how they're going to actually really react. But, you know, keep your distance. So what you men, do? Got, men got such fragile egos. That's why I tell women all the time, like, they hate rejection, so you're right. You don't know how they will react. Yeah. So what did you do? People crazy nowadays. Nothing. I just nicely ghosted them. <laughs> you know, and if I see them on the street, hey, how you doing? Oh, that's great. Good to you know, good to you. Right. Keep walking now. Change your number. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you straddle yeah. the line when it comes to picking the roles you choose to play? Um, I do like whatever I feel in my heart that's not going to disappoint God, and I'm excited about doing, or I feel like it's a different character, mm -hmm. that's something I played before. Then that's you know what I go for. I just try to do stuff that excites me. So when you say disappoint God, so there's certain roles you wouldn't play? Yeah, yeah. But God knows your heart. He knows your acting. That's true. But if I feel if I feel like convicted about it, then I won't mm -hmm. do it. Like what role? Like what type of role? Um, Like certain type of nudity or like, um, I mean, there's not really necessarily a particular role. It just depends on like the whole content of the script. Mm -hmm. So like one thing for sure is like a certain type of nudity you're just not going to get from me. Like J-Lo's doing a stripper movie. You wouldn't do that? I don't know. You know, it, it depends it, on the role, probably. Yeah, okay. it depends on the role, cause I'm, cause I don't like, I don't judge strippers. Like we all have our journey and experience mm -hmm. in life, and I feel like if the journey is real and it's a real experience, then you know that might be a fun character to play. Mm -hmm. I would love to do a strip scene. That'd be fun. Does the stigma <laughs> of being a, a preacher's wife define some of the roles you do? Um, no. At, there was a time when I first got married where I felt like I was like walking on eggshells, cause. What I experienced, like with the whole BET debacle and all that stuff, I was like traumatized. Oh, and I was it was like, on you for what you wore? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was not ready. I was like, wait, y'all, we supposed to be the most accepting and loving people in the world. And if you want to correct me, that's fine, but correct me in love. Don't mm -hmm. like come for me like that, you know? So those first two years, I was like, I'm not quite sure how to walk. Like, I know I have to be me because I don't know how to be anything else. But I always felt like I was like walking out to the firing squad every time I was being myself, mm -hmm. every time I was being authentic. At this point, 
you know, it's seven years in and it's like, you know what? God has allowed me to have the experiences in life that I've had and the, for me to look at the world the way that I look at it. So as long as I'm being authentic, I'm not for everybody, but I am for who I am for. And as long as I'm true to who I am, at the end of the day, the other ones who don't get it, God bless them. That's what. Yeah, I never understood why they came at you for your clothes because the church says come as you are. Right. Yeah. So I, I mean, never understood that. There, there's, yeah, there's a lot of scripture that supports it and, mm -hmm. and also says God is not even focused on that. For me, I'm like, it doesn't really come down to religion for me. It comes down to having a relationship with God and hearing from him myself. And if I feel that he's like, don't do that, then I won't do it. Mm. If I don't feel that that's what he's saying, then I proceed if I feel comfortable and I feel like I'm doing the right thing. And what I found is a lot of women that come up to me, they're like, thank you for being who you are because the church has told me that I'm not good enough because of the way I dress or because of this or because of that. And you just being authentic says, no, God loves me as I am. And if there's something to work on, me and God will work it out. It's not between me and Sally and Trevor and whoever else. It's between me and God. So when the intruder script comes across your desk and you yeah. read it, what does God say to you? Have fun. <laughs> have fun, my daughter. <laughs> yeah, and I did. I really did have a good time um, shooting this project. And I love, like, the space. Like, the thriller space, to me, it's like the the, the heightened, like, thing that you feel in life like when you're trying to live and survive you don't get to experience that in every other script and like some people look down on like thrills and horror movies they're like oh well you know that's not that type of acting and i'm like i don't know what any crazier type of acting is than like trying to live mm -hmm. you know and i love that feeling i just love that whole space I'm did you do your own stunts i did because there was a lot of yeah, said, yeah, yeah all did your own stunts yeah yeah michael didn't necessarily want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah like he wanted to tion was like do you do stunts he was like nope <laughs> and tion was like well this is a smaller budget movie so um but for me i was like i couldn't wait like that that scene with me and dennis where um i don't want to give it away but i like it looked like i got hurt um, Dion was like, cut, cut, cut. And he was like, are you okay? I was like, no, I was just acting. Wow. He thought I had really got knocked out. So Dion messed up the scene, basically. <laughs> That's not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, Keep it going. I did. Was I did. it as good as the first time? I think did you so. Sell it? I think so. I had fun. Have you ever been time. mentally captivated by a role to the point where you, like, it took you a while to get out of it? Mm, no, I don't think so. I mean, sometimes, like, when I do dramatic scenes, like, for, like, a, 30 minutes or an hour afterwards, I might be like a little depressed or like in my head or quiet. But after that, I'm good. Because I feel like those scenes would give you anxiety, right? Like you have to have a certain amount yeah. of fear. Yeah, yeah. So that's easy just to shake off once it's done? Um, It's not easy to shake off, but I can shake it off ultimately because mm -hmm. I've been at it since I was a kid. So I know like what gears to step into. But sometimes you just have stuff that your character is experiencing that's so traumatic that you just, it takes a minute to like kind of step out of it and go, okay. Let me calm down, you know. Mm. Well, I always wanted to know, was it ever too much being married to a preacher? Like, was it ever overbearing, you know? Not from him. That's no. the amazing thing, because, like, he... Because you got to go to church every Sunday. you got to do something. No. Why are you telling her what you got to do? She can go to church online. Well, why are you telling her what she got to do? <laughs> you should ask her. <laughs> but you got to go to church. You can't just go to church on a Sunday. No, you know. You can't just stay home. You can't be sick. I, well, you know, sometimes I am, you know? Because yeah. honestly, like I said, those first two years, it, that experience for me made me not want to go to church at all. Really? I was like, I'm done. I love y'all from a distance. Um, and but then I ended up. You say going, it like that. You said, "Man, fuck them hoes." Make that hoe. No, 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 for real. Like I got, I like, I'm, yeah, I'm sensitive, Susie. I got a lot of love in my heart for people, especially the people who come against me, because I feel like that gives me an opportunity to build my character and be a better person. Because I, I used to get upset and I used to get my feelings hurt. Now I'm like, no, I'm just gonna pray for them because they right. don't know any better. Pray for their judgment. Yeah. Like, why are yeah. you so judgmental and miserable? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, and it kind of makes me sad for them a little bit. Mm -hmm. So Isaiah fifty four seventeen, which is no weapon formed against you shall, shall prosper. prosper. Amen. And Amen. any Amen. tongue that speaks against you shall be condemned. I think something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I got, we got that might have been the remix, but I'm in. <laughs> it was. I'm in the yeah. ballpark. I was like, it's not exactly yeah. that, but it's that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So um, no, but he's he's great. Like the wonderful thing about him is he's like super supportive. Mm. He didn't marry me to change me. He married me for me to be who I am and for us to grow together and that's you know that's a you can go to church online too right yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the best way <laughs> <laughs> for me be at home cleaning the house listening to church yeah. online <laughs> yeah i do a little bit of everything now so. mm -hmm. Yeah. What about passionate role? Like, have you ever looked at a script now, right? And you're married now and yeah. say, that's just a little too much. I can do this, but I'm not going to. Yeah. And in that case, like, I just have a conversation with the director. And if that's really what he wants, then maybe I'm just not the girl for the part. But in terms of, like, like the stuff with Michael Ely, it was easy because him and I are both married. And him and I 
him and I are both very serious about the craft, and we were like, how do we make this relationship authentic, and how do we make it real? And yeah, y'all made me believe y'all was a couple, boy. Good, Y'all, y'all good. felt like y'all were a couple. Good. When you, when you Thank work you. with someone with Michael Ealy, who you've worked with before, is it yeah. hard not to relapse into the roles y'all played previously? <laughs> like, no, because you know what? Like, we did, we worked before, but we didn't actually, like, have any scenes together. Okay. So it's like, I mean, we were in a few scenes together, but we didn't actually, like, talk to each other. Mm-hmm. So um, this, for us, was, like, completely brand new. We're bringing Dion Taylor. Yeah. I feel bad, because I was missing Taylor. Dion! Taylor. Good morning, what up, Dion? What's going on? Just How so y'all know, Megan brother? Good doesn't hate me. We were just sa- saving the seat for Dion. Not true. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? How are you? Good. Yeah, bro. Hi, Dion. Dion Good is morning. the director of The Intruder. Is it bad that I felt bad that y'all made a cute couple? No. I was like, no. did you make a cute? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Dion and Megan? No. Let's tell them no. who no. Megan's like, Megan. Like, no. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> not, not you. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. We were talking about we seen the movie you? and we, we thought the movie was great. Oh, we man, seen the that's Washington, fantastic. Washington Post kind of hated it a little bit. We didn't understand what they meant by the movie. Right. I seen that. And because... And you and I actually seen it. We was like, nah, we we really like the movie. I was in here watching Dang it on it. the edge of my seat, and then and we was like, how are you watching that? And I'm like, they sent us the screener for 24 hours. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's great, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we've been all over the country screening the film, and um, yeah, it's been it's pretty been crazy. crazy, man. We actually had someone in uh, Kansas City mm-hmm. pass out. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't know what you can write bad about. <laughs> I'm like, it's, it's been it's been fun, man. But you know, we made the movie for this, for entertainment. Yeah. You know, sometimes you you get to make film and cinema, and and you you know, obviously it's art. But sometimes you want to make something for the audience so they could jump, scream, and have escapism. And yeah. I think this movie is that. Is this who, who, who is Deion Taylor for the people who don't know, though? Oh man, I'm a. Uh, just a young black filmmaker, man. Just uh, build my own way, uh, finance my own projects, um, and trying to do it, you know, for us, by us. That's who I am. Did, yeah. this, happen, did this happen to you? Intruder, did it actually happen to you? Did you buy a home one day and the guy didn't want to leave? Not at no. All. But, <laughs> something happened though recently. It did just happen Uh-oh. recently. Man, I want to hear something wild. Yes, we do. I need to tell you this. Mm-mm. So I've been on, we've been on the road for two weeks, mm-hmm. like promoting the film. It's been great. I'm like, man, this is fantastic. I live in Northern California, but I got a spot in LA. Mm-hmm. So we get ready for last night's event. So I send my man to the house in LA to go get my suit, bring it out here to New York. He gets to the house, opens the door, goes in the house, in the bedroom, two guys living in the house, in Whoa. the Airbnb house that I'm renting for three months. They were squatting? Squatting. With my clothes on. <gasps> With your clothes on? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What did it smell like? <laughs> what did it smell like? I, you know, I wasn't there, bro. <laughs> I wasn't crazy. there. And I'm glad I wasn't there. Were they yeah. a couple or they just was separately? A couple. A couple. Living in the they house, man. They was in man. the bed. All my stuff gone no. so hard. They was role playing with your clothes. <laughs> role playing, role oh playing my with my God. intruder uh, intruder shirts on. Bro, that's See, a movie. That's the energy you let in? That's a movie. <laughs> that's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I, I'm like, what's the irony of that? Like, you talking about the intruder and there's some intruders. intruders. You know, people's intruding in your Airbnb. <laughs> That's crazy. So it's real, man. So you do the clothes out or you let them keep it? They stole all my stuff. Damn. He had, he had, I was not there. He had to call the police and everybody came and the dude jumped out the window. It's a bunch of crazy. Why is it so That's easy to break in people's houses in California? Every happening? time hey, we always know, see somebody man. getting their house broken in California. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but Dennis Quaid, that's who you don't want in your house. I know that. <laughs> right. But yeah. Now, now, Dion, what's the difference between fully funding your own films and taking money from a studio to fund your films? What's, what's the difference? Uh, well, the the big difference is trying to create and own the IP. Mm. Uh, so most times when people say independent, a lot of people don't understand what that means. Independent, 100% means that you have went and found your own financing for your film. You go out, you make your movie by yourself, mm-hmm. and you own it. Studio means that you have a great script or a good idea, or they hire you to actually go make a film. Mm -hmm. And it's theirs, and you're work for hire. Mm -hmm. So independent is a very tough road, Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, it's a road that we're trying to open up a little bit more for African-American artists and filmmakers. It's just like a musician. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You could be signed to a label and, you know, or, or a 360 deal, right? Or you could be an independent artist and make all your money and control your masters and do everything you you know you want to do. Right. Right. And um, I think, you know, since the passing of Nipsey, I think it's interesting, man, because outside of the context of what he was doing, I think a lot of people really began to be like, "Yo, what was he doing?" 
Mm-hmm. He was owning himself. You know what I mean? He was owning his content, and that's and that's important, man. So it's not about right now. It's about later. Right. You know, what are you going to live for your kids and all that good stuff? You get a check and a big old car now, but in 20 years, what's going to happen? Well, Dion, is it tough also because then you have, you know, A-list actors like Megan Good, Michael Ealy, Dennis Quaid, and you can't pay them the money that they might have been used to getting paid. Right. But then you have to say, okay, look, this is a situation. Like, what's the bargaining there? Yeah, so it's back in. Mm-hmm. So now they get to play in a, in a world that they normally don't get to play in. Because mm-hmm. now you're like, okay, Megan, Michael, Dennis, I'm going to give you guys equity in the film. You're mm-hmm. going to have back in points. Mm-hmm. Right. So now that movie means more to them. Um, Blumhouse, which is Jason Blum's company who did Get Out, mm-hmm. um, Us, you know, Paranormal Activity, they only work in small increments like that. So they're making movies for $5 million and, and, and under. And if you do one of those films, you can imagine what the back end looked like for Jordan Peele on Get Out. Right. Right. Shoot. But the Rel, rea- Rel said that they delivered his back end check with an armed security guard I'm sure. and a gift wrap <laughs> box. I'm sure. But, but, here's the thing, but here's the thing. That. Well, my arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, Universal and Blumhouse and whatever percentage, there's three people involved in that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Versus if you, you know, you create it and then take it or get a distribution deal. So, independent is that. Well, guys, Megan, Megan has to go. But before you, I thought you she leave, said nine forty. They said nine thirty. Oh, 930. 930. Well, John Singleton just passed away, and I just wanted to know, you know, what that meant for you guys, you being oh, a director, man. being an actress. Yeah. Um. It's tough because it's like, you know, my heart like hurts for his family. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel that loss, like somebody for me who really changed the culture, being from L.A., someone who, you know, showed us that we can be exactly who we are and play in this field without having to conform to, you know, whatever else that is and really just be us and be authentic and still win. And that authenticity is our superpower. And that's what makes us different, and that's what makes us powerful. And so everything that he meant to me, it just breaks my heart because I'm just, I, I feel like he's such a force, you know? And, um, yeah, I'm just sad for his family. And I'm, and I'm sad for us because we lost one. Like, we really lost one that changed the culture. You worked with him on Ways Deep, right? No, I that didn't. I didn't get a chance to work with him. I thought he directed Ways Deep. No, um, Von D. Curtis Hall did. Oh. But we did sit down and we um, we had a meeting talking about the coldest winter ever. Okay. About making that movie because mm. he wanted to make that for a long that's time. Good. Yeah, he should. That's good. Um, and so yeah. I was about to give him props for you know helping you be able to deal with Tyrese for a whole. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm but, like, that's that's my man. Tyrese, I have nothing to do with that team. That's <laughs> my <laughs> man. Then <laughs> what about you, Dion? Oh uh, man, I I think it's um, I think. Is is past sad, but then at the same time, it's shocking. I, for me, it was like a, a weird thing because the first thing I thought about was my health. Mm. When I seen that, you know what I mean? I was just like... Everything started bothering me. My right. legs started hurting, yeah, my arm hurt, yeah, everybody because, started hurting. And the family does want people to make sure they see those signs and get checked. They yeah, because I think as black men, you know, for me, I know being raised in the inner city, you don't go to the doctor. You know, you go to the doctor when something's wrong. Right. And you're, you're raised with those habits and... That's the first thing for me. But then I was just like, I really, really upset and sad about it, man, because I don't think a lot of people understand how important some of these storytellers are. You know, John and Spike and the people that came before them. Right. You know, I was saying earlier, cinema is escapism for a lot of young black kids in urban America. The first time that I ever seen what L.A. was like in Gary, Indiana, was through Boys in the Hood. Right. Mm. Yeah. The first time I ever seen what the streets of New York and the culture was like was through Spike Lee, Do the Right Thing. Right. As I got older, I had never really been to Atlanta. I seen Tyler Perry, right? I'm like, so you you escape through cinema through these guys that have these Lens. magic cameras and lenses and they tell you all this stuff. And John, man, 51 years old as a filmmaker, he's in his prime. Right. These guys are shooting movies at their best, 60, 65. Clint Eastwood was 80 years old. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you're you talking about he had a good 10, 12 movies left, and we don't know what that would have been. You know what I mean? So it's just it's, it's hurtful, man, because we don't have very many black filmmakers in the space, number one. But then number two, him being the first African-American filmmaker ever nominated for an Academy Award. Yeah. Yeah. You know, anyways, it's just it's terrible, man. It's mm-hmm. Terrible. Well, Listen, Megan, I know Megan, Megan gotta, gotta go, go, but let's yeah. keep Dion for a little bit longer. I got a Absolutely. couple more questions for Dion. Well, thank you, Megan. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you, you for having me. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Peace, Queen. Thank you.
Now, I took my shoes off. Yeah. <laughs> cool. I like that. You I got you. I'm in here with my slides. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, Linda, listen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank All right. you. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. I'll see, see you in a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Dion, let me ask you a question. Yeah. What's more important, black representation in front of the camera or behind it? Because I don't think people are realizing what it is that you actually do. You fund these films yourself. So what's more important, black representation in front of the camera or, or behind it? Man, what's more important? I would, man, that's a tough question. I would have to say, I would have to say behind the camera right now mm -hmm. because it would allow you to put more people in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. um, so the back to the front, um, I think that's the, the most important now because Basically, if you, we were just talking about John Singleton. The white guy behind you is just grabbing her purse, that's all. That's all, <laughs> just grabbing her purse. Um, talking about John Singleton, I mean, look at, look, at, look at what John did in his career. You're talking about 22 of the most affluent actors of our generation came through him. Mm -hmm. So Tyrese, Morris Chestnut, right? Taraji P. Taraji. He put I mean, Janet in her first Janet, movie. I mean. Pop. Pop, I mean, yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. That's behind the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, and then if you if you got over to higher learning, you're getting into, you know, Ice even Cube, more. Busta right, Rhymes, right. you know what I mean? Like, even so, Boys in the Hood was cute. Boys in the Hood. So I just think the reality is if we can control and 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 write the narrative a little bit more, then it's it's a much more powerful thing. Does it bother you when white filmmakers tell black stories? Yeah, it does at times, uh, depending on what it is. Um, I think one thing you can't teach is authenticity. Mm -hmm. And one thing you can't you can't learn is the culture. So when you see like an incredible film about one of us, uh, it would be the same thing if you asked me to go do the Abraham Lincoln story, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, all right, I'll take a shot at it, you know what I mean? But Abe Lincoln was black allegedly. But I can't I can't access those thoughts. You right. know what I mean? So if you're doing a movie and 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 James Brown you got, you know, you got to have a black filmmaker sit there and do that. Or sometimes it could work. You have an incredible collaboration like Jamie Foxx and Taylor Hackford. Mm -hmm. But Jamie's so authentic and he's so grounded mm -hmm. that I could tell that Taylor would lean on him a lot for those moments. You know what I mean? In terms of how beautifully he portrayed Ray. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, when you start getting into like the culture and all that, you got to have somebody that's actually lived it and been in there. I think it bothers me. It bothers me a lot when I see people do a lot of documentaries on our lives. It's crazy. And it's, it's almost like, you know, they use everything that they've seen. They use the abuse. They use everything. They get paid yeah. off of it. Yeah. And it's like, all right, peace. See y'all later. I, I hate yeah. it because I feel like we don't get, for everything that we've been through, we, we don't get rewarded or paid or nothing, nothing. for it. That's nothing. why I love what Dion them is doing because this is really for us, yeah. by us. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's tough, man. And, and uh, it's something that a lot of people don't want to see us do is have ownership. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't have to say that to you guys. That's, that's a real, real tough road, man. Like, you start owning and controlling and putting people, in, that's why I think Tyler Perry is so beautiful as a person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. He figured it out, man. Like he really figured, he did, yeah. no matter if you like his films or not. Mm -hmm. You respect you, it. You gotta respect what Absolutely. he's doing, man, for all people, you know what I mean? And and I'm a, Tyler Perry, here's a crazy story. My mom, who's sick now, um, you know, she's the one who kind of got me in it. It's like, you got, boy, you could be, Got me pumped up one day. I'm like, man, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. She was trying to act, right? So she started. My mom like, was trying to act. My mom. Uh -huh. This is a true story. And she was um, going to casting calls. You know, she older lady and started getting extra roles. So one day I come home and she's like, Tyler Perry wrote me an email. I said, Mom. <laughs> Tyler Perry didn't write you no know, email. He did. So I go to the thing and look. I said, Mom, it's a casting call from Tyler Perry. Right, so she said. Well, so I'm she going. was right. She, yeah, so she said. So she said, "I'm going. I'm going. To, I need you to give me some money. I'm going to Atlanta because Tyler Perry want me to come to Atlanta." So I'm like, "Ma." Uh, so, anyways, we. Hold argued. on, Tyler Perry flew your mom out. Dion? No, that was, <laughs> no. Come on, man. Relax. Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> no. So I paid my mom's trip to go to Atlanta because she really wanted to go and audition mm -hmm. for Tyler Perry. And I said, "Man, it'd be great. You go go out there, have a good time." She goes out there goes to the audition, calls me from the audition. This is an amazing story. Mm -hmm. Calls me in the evening like, Dang, I guess what? I said, what? They called me back. <laughs> they want me to come back here in the morning, so I gotta stay one more day. So I'm like, really? So now I'm going like, what's going on? The next morning she goes back, does whatever, calls me. They want me to stay to the evening. So I'm like, oh damn, she's like- About to get the she's role. She's moving, <laughs> right? 
the next night, and we had practiced her lines. She had four lines. Four lines. She had four what lines. What were the lines? I know you remember. She had four lines. I'm, I'm not, I can't. She, what's the, uh, um, uh, what movie I'm, was it? This is uh, his uh, second movie. Um, di- um, the first one was Diary of a Mad Black Woman. I forgot what the second um, one was. Let me look it up. What do we, what do we, what is, um, it's two of them. Uh, what was the second one? Not Why Did I Get Married? It was his second I mean, movie? Anyways, what's the name of the movie? Oh. Um, anyway, so they call her How back. you don't remember your mama first movie? Right, right. You should be ashamed My of brain, I'm in intruder mode right now. I'm trying <laughs> to tell y'all a great Daddy's story. Daddy's little girl. I'm what trying to tell y'all an incredible all story. Movies. All right, but go ahead. So, oh, why did I get married? <laughs> no, man. It's, it's, the, it's the movie. <laughs> That's what I just said. With like, the, all the people, all the, he introduced all the uh, characters. All the Medea characters? Yeah. It's uh, a Medea movie. Uh, Medea, Medea uh, it was his highest grossing film. It was his highest grossing film. I don't even don't know. Worry about it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I've seen every Tyler Perry movie. movie. I don't know these computers in here. <laughs> Why don't I know the movie? Tyler Perry's highest the, grossing the, They just here for show. They don't it's really It's the work. first, right. Y'all everybody looking with cool headsets. <laughs> Diary of a Mad Black Woman? No, that no, was, it's that the, was Medea, the first it's one. the first Medea. That's Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Medea's Family Reunion. Medea goes to jail. A Medea Christmas. Medea's in Atlanta. Medea's, Medea's, Medea's Witness Medea's Protection. Medea's Family Reunion. Medea's Tough Love. Came out in 06. Medea what year was it? What year was it? <laughs> <laughs> Medea is the first Medea film. Medea's Family is. Reunion. Okay, that's, that's it. That's it. All right, all right, yeah. So look, so. so <laughs> <laughs> Medea's something. Medea <laughs> goes to Mars. All right. <laughs> Anyways, my mom gets the part. Right. Oh, I can in do this bad by film. myself. Seriously. She got the part. In this movie, my mom went to, flew, I flew my mom <laughs> That's to Atlanta. Dope. She got the part of the Tyler Perry movie, and it, like, grossed $100 million. Wow. So now. She ain't getting no back in on that one. No, no, no. <laughs> she ain't getting no back in. So we, like, I'm going crazy, because here I am making these little movies. I'm like, damn, my mom just went and worked with Tyler Perry. So now, like, everywhere we go, we're in Northern California, everywhere we go, my mom walked through the church. Hey, you. She's a celebrity now. Right. So one of the highlights of my life, and I don't even know Tyler Perry, but one of the biggest highlights of my life is that that man touched my mom and did something for her magical. And he don't even know that, but that's he inspired dope. me that's in another way to even empower more people. So anyways, that's have my... You, yeah, have I you used your mom in the film? Oh, man, every time I could. Okay. Yeah, every time I can. Yeah, yeah I didn't appreciate Tyler's... I, like, I used to love the plays, then I yeah. liked the first couple of the movies, then they got redundant. But then to me... Just him as a businessman mm-hmm. is what is so inspirational. Absolutely. You know what I mean? The fact that he owns all his, his own content. Like, yeah. that's his for life. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that, but I think Tyler's eye, I, I don't know. I don't know him. I'm just, when I watch a film, I try to figure out what's the craft that everyone's going after as a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. A lot of his stuff feels like, it, it feels like stage plays. Mm-hmm. Like, he shoots like a play. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I think a lot of people are not used to that. So, in other words, it's not going to always be all the cameras, and mm-hmm. it's not going to be the intruder. You know what I mean? Where I'm like 360 and people, and he's just not that. He, 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 he really captures a great story right in front of the camera, right with people. And I think a lot of people have to get used to it, but it's also why a lot of people love it. Because it's so simplistic and it's great for the audience. His own style. Because Spike yeah. had his own style for this years. This is his style. Yeah, it's what you know, it Spike is. had that style where he's like you're walking and pulling the, somebody on yeah, the yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it has John a lot of has, it has yeah. a lot of themes that people could relate to also. Yeah, in real life. well, That's really human what it is. human themes. You know what I mean? And we all are flawed. So mm-hmm. I'm going to see Tyler's play next month. Medea's farewell. <laughs> it's gonna be at Radio City <laughs> next month. I'm in there. <laughs> now, now, how did you, you you Robert Smith is your business partner? Robert Smith, man, yeah. the richest black man in America. The richest black man in America. Wow. Four point two billion dollars. He's worth it. Yeah. How did you connect <laughs> with him? So I was uh working on my first film and uh we were like running out of money. And I was at the time trying to figure out is there any who else could we go? Because I didn't know what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I was just winging it, man. And um a young lady, my my brother had a uh publicist at the time, and she was like you know who you should know? You should know this guy named Robert. He was not Robert Smith like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he was worth a couple hundred million dollars. He was like, oh my God, you guys are so fun together. Y'all, would, you would love him and he would love you. So I was like, can he come here tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I need this bring right now. the money on Friday, you know what I mean? So she was like, no, that's not gonna work that way. And anyways, long story short, she ends up setting up a, uh, a meeting with me to meet him. And uh, he drives down from San Francisco at the time I was in Sacramento. And uh, we met each other, man, and hit it off. and. He asked me the five year goal, like, what do you want to do in five years? And uh, at the time, you know, I was like, damn, really that question? And I just told him I would love to like own my own kind of like boutique production company. Mm-hmm. And um, this man changed my life. Wow. 
changed my life. Sometimes God puts people in your life for a reason, right. and um, you don't really realize why. And not only did he come and, and help with that film, but we lost, man. We kept losing. You know what I mean? And, and, and he wasn't betting on the X's and O's. He was betting on my heart and who I was. And that's how most successful business people are. When you talk about Warren Buffett, these guys bet on people, mm -hmm. not numbers. Because the reality is if the lights went out in here right now, you want to have people that's going to go to war. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, hide under the desk because you're super smart. Like, well, it says I could survive if I get in that corner. Like, no, we're going to fight. Mm -hmm. And that's the type of people he look for, and he's that type of person. So, yeah, man, we've been fighting for a long time, man. We found some really, really good success, and now we're really, on, you know, off and running. I feel like the coach doesn't really know who Robert Smith is, which is weird to me. Like, yeah. how do you not know a black man that's worth $4.2 billion in America? Well, it's great, though, because, because what makes him beautiful, man, and what makes him one of the most electric people in the world is that he's not vain. Mm -hmm. He's not hanging out and balling out of control. And, you know, his Instagram would be crazy. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> no, it would be. man, his, his whole mission is philanthropy. His mm -hmm. whole mission is how do I help, how do I encourage, how do I build? And what's also great about him is when you discover him, you go like, wow, that's real. Mm -hmm. It's real that, me and you had the conversation, it's real that Robert Smith exists. Yeah, and not in the entertainment space. And not in, not not bouncing Robert. a ball, yeah. not making a movie, yeah. you know what I mean? He didn't make a cool app. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He actually built his own way and became the richest African-American man in the world. And now that's why you have the museum in D.C. Mm -hmm. That's why you have all the Tuskegee Airmen stuff paid for. Right. When the girls was in Boca Run and all the stuff was going on mm -hmm. with them, that's who paid for that. You know what I mean? Like, this is that guy. Like, behind the scenes, like, yo, how do I help the culture? And you, you talk about the losses you have, but you, you got some wins. You started getting your wins. Got some wins, a couple <laughs> wins. Man. Hopefully we win on this one, man. This is an important movie for me, The Intruder. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I was telling Michael Ealy when he was here, like, movies like this get me excited because they are funded <laughs> yeah. by black people. Like, yeah, these are the movies deal. that we should really be empowering. Yeah, and, and yeah, you, you said it, man, you know, but you guys have a direct line to the culture. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't know that. You know, if you're not gigantic on Instagram, you don't have a whole bunch of, you know, for me, I'm just kind of like telling whoever I could tell, like, yo, get behind it, like push it. And mm -hmm. now what's been great is this the first time I see people really hear the message. Mm -hmm. People are like, yo, really? And I'm like, yeah, really? Like we made this movie ourselves. Right. Megan and Michael came to work. I wrote a letter to Dennis Quaid to come do the movie. He responded to a letter. Wow. You know what I mean? And it's that type of thing. We're all like pulling each other up and, you know, now we have a film and it's testing through the roof. Everyone loves it. And if this is successful, then guess what? We get to do another one and mm -hmm. another one and another one. And we keep on building that way. And Was Dennis Quaid your first choice for that role? My Where first choice. That's amazing. My first really? choice. And um, being able to make these movies at this level, you know, my producing partner, Roxanne. Um, Salute to Roxanne. Man, big shout out to Roxanne, man. An incredible. She is black female producer and she is the person that's actually allowing us to make these films for two and three and four million dollars at this range. Mm -hmm. So she actually has a program that, you know, she cracks the whip like, yo, mm -hmm. what you doing? You don't need that camera. Put that over there. <laughs> you don't need them lenses. So you gotta have, it's, it's all the way down. So mm -hmm. from Robert to Roxanne to me finally at the creative to the talent, it's all black. Wow. Yeah. And every conversation me and Dion have ever had has always been about ownership. It's That's always it. been about equity. That's Anytime it. we've ever talked about creating any content, you always bring it right back to you should own this and you should own You that. have to, man, because you got incredible ideas. That show you got? Oh, has he talked no, that about show, that show we got. No, 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 no. This dude got a no show, man. No need for us to say that. <laughs> yeah. Dion, no, we don't need to share that to the world right okay, now. Okay, I, <laughs> I will not share it at all, but it's incredible. <laughs> yes. Golly. Thank you. Yes, yes. You yes. think that people end up spending too much money making movies because we hear of all these big budget oh, movies? Oh, my goodness, yeah. Well, the, stu the studios don't know what we know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, in terms of, like, it's like, you one of the most prolific DJs ever. You know what I mean in terms of Dion, what you, come on. You don't have to. Is. You don't have to lie. Who doesn't? Who does not know? Right. But what I'm saying <laughs> is, <laughs> no need to. Right. But what I'm saying. But what, <laughs> he wore purple today, and he's just outside of himself today. He didn't have to do that. So what I'm saying. saying prolific what, 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 <laughs> What I'm saying you is, said the truth oh, let the man, man speak. What I'm saying is you 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 prolific. Come, you prolific <laughs> you, but, but you come from you come from the era where you used to carry your records. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. You used to pull your craze, you used mm -hmm. to have to fill up a really? truck and I thought you was thirty two. 
I am. But I had crates. <laughs> okay. You had crates, right? right. Yeah, absolutely. At some you point have in your to, life, you had to carry your, your records. You right? had to absolutely, record the yeah. song off the radio to cassette and then play them in the club. What I'm saying is you understand how to do the legwork. Absolutely. Yeah. Some studios don't know how to do the legwork, so they spend more money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So where you would actually physically lift that stuff or bring that stuff or do that stuff, they have six, seven people doing the job of one person, so right. the budgets go through the roof. Then they overpay. and you know It's just it's crazy, but... It's just because they're a gigantic corporation, mm-hmm. so they don't know. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You guys probably talk to the Revolt and the Breakfast Club and and tell them how to save a whole bunch of money. But oh no, they they just take they give them off the whole right. staff for two <laughs> but, weeks. You know at what I mean? Time. You really yeah. thought about yeah. it? You'd be like, oh, we. Turn that TV off during the broadcast, right? We saved right. 20 cents. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We're both, don't tell them. They'll turn it off. Right. <laughs> don't tell them that. <laughs> and the Intruder will be out this Friday. Yes. Then you got another movie coming with Tyrese, right? Yeah, so the Intruder uh, drops this Friday. And then um, we have a film called Exposure Man with Naomi Harris, mm-hmm. uh, who is the star of Moonlight, Oscar nominated, mm. and Tyrese. And uh, Frank Grillo from The Avengers. And uh, it's a really, really special movie, man. A black police officer, female police officer in New Orleans, she sees a guy, a narc officer, kill a black kid on her body cam. So the movie follows her story to get the body cam back to the precinct, and it's dope. I told Dion, I said, I'm so glad that we got people that can fund movies, man, black people that can fund movies, because now we can give our crazy-ass cousins like Tyrese jobs. <laughs> yeah. You I was, know I was what gonna, I'm saying? I was going to ask about that. <laughs> when Tyrese was going through his crazy, was that, was that when you said, you know what, I'm going to hire this brother, or was it before that? It was after. It was after. Um, I've known Tyrese for a while, and we never had a chance to work together. And I'll tell you what's interesting, man. Um, Hollywood is a weird place, man. Like, what happens a lot of times is when someone turns you off or they're like, oh, you, we ain't on him right now. He got to. Mm-hmm. Everybody looks the other way. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. this world I'm in allows me never to look the other way. Yep. Tyrese is a star. Tyrese is gross billions of dollars. So no matter what has happened or what he's done, no one should be shelved. You know what I mean? If you say something wrong on the radio and everybody, oh, like, once you're independent, you're on yourself, you don't have to go with the wave. Gotcha. You know, the reality mm-hmm. is I'm going to pick you up because you're my brother. You know All what right. I mean? So the Tyrese thing, when when this film came around, and everybody was like, yo, get this person. I said, man, we can't go wrong with T. And this dude came, and when I tell you he killed this movie, killed it. Oh, nobody ever said Tyrese he's wasn't talented. talented. He's, no, he's yeah. extremely talented. Are there people yeah. that are talented yeah. that you, you wouldn't work with, though, because of personality? Is there anybody that you would be like, okay? I don't I don't know anybody. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, normally because I have a really good personality in terms of, like, getting along with people, I don't... I, I tend to stay away from bad energy. Because mm-hmm. sometimes at work it's different. Somebody could be real cool, but right. then when it's time right to work, that. it's a completely different story. Yeah, and film is really different because you got to live with them people mm-hmm. for 30 days. I mean, every day. Right. But like you see long like days, people Megan, get irritable. Megan, Michael, Dennis Quaid, like we were in a house literally for thirty days together. They told us. <laughs> yeah, they told and, us yeah. and and for you to remain friends and have fun and mm-hmm. you know, that's just that's just the energy, man. Like how what energy you're giving off. Yeah, because it has to be hard to work with people who have bad energy when you're spending that much time together. And I'm I'll sure walk it happens. Away. I'll leave. No, I ain't yeah, got time I'll leave. For I'll it. be like, Hey, you know I'm what? Wrong. I mean that we in three days? Okay, let's finish this up and that's yeah, it. go ahead. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. Mm-hmm. Right. What about promoting a movie afterward? Because that's important too. That's the most important thing. So right now, I had a, a post on my on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago because last year this time we were hanging up our own posters. So I had a film called Traffic, and um, we had a smaller distribution arm for the film, but we were literally out hanging up posters, doing our own social media campaign, pushing and. Shout out to Traffic, man. We was nominated for uh, Best Picture of the Year, NAACP Image Award. Got to say thank you for that, but. Yeah, and then to come around this way now and have Sony, mm-hmm. where everywhere you look, you see the intruder. It's it's been and so we still behind the scenes like, yo, can you can you pose? Can you you know what I mean? We still because we it's just in our muscle. It's our DNA. You know what I mean? So the promotion is the biggest thing for people to actually see it. Right to know it's available. Do yeah. you have to put it in the contracts now for actors to like? Okay, we need to make sure when you get this role. They they do, but I I normally don't because I have really good relationship with talent. So mm-hmm. everybody you've seen here, Megan, I mean. They're all here because they want to be here, and mm-hmm. they're all here because we all made something mm-hmm. independently together that we're proud of. So if it was, I don't know, if it was Avengers, I'm sure everybody want to check, you know, to go talk about whatever they just Absolutely. did. But this is different. That's why I think it's so important. And giving them equity in it they makes them go out there and, and right. go work, hard for it. Work right. hard, man. Work right. hard for what you you own a piece of it. It's yours. You know what I mean? 
your name on the screen. Right. Well, we appreciate you for joining yeah, us, man. Yeah, give all your Instagrams and Twitters yeah, and all that good definitely stuff. Definitely check Deion. it out this Friday. I, I don't have nothing. I just got. <laughs> I just got. <laughs> you De- on Instagram? I'm on Deion Taylor. That's yeah. it. At Deion Taylor. Yeah, I don't have nothing. At Deion Taylor. <laughs> and, and the intruder. In. Intruder be out this Friday. Man, yep. go see the intruder, man. Well, whoever you are listening on the radio right now, one time for Independence, man. Please go support this film. It is really good. So we're not we're not gonna hit you over the head. But this is this is the one right here, man. It's classic. I think they'd have believed you if you hadn't called Envy prolific. But that's no way. He worry is prolific. <laughs> Keep him his he props. He is prolific. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> go out there. Would you say he's the prolific? Film? Yeah, if he could spell it. <laughs> oh, challenge! Yeah. Spell it! Spell it! Spell it! Spell it! Spell it! Prolific, Envy. Spell it. Come on. P R O prolific. We see you guys. No, we thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate it. All right, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. 